1959, a Soviet scientist did something that would change our understanding of evolution forever. Dmitry Belyev started with 130 silver foxes from a fur farm. His official goal? To breed better fur foxes. His real goal? To recreate the entire process of domestication from wild animal to pet. Something that took wolves 15,000 years to become dogs. He wanted to do it in decades. At the time, just suggesting that animals could be domesticated through selective breeding was dangerous in the Soviet Union. It went against official communist doctrine that rejected genetics. Scientists who study genetics have been sent to labor camps or executed, so Belyev had to be careful. He disguised his real research as a simple fur farming experiment. His method was remarkably simple. He would approach each fox's cage and try to offer food. Most foxes would bare their teeth, growl, or hide in terror, but a few showed slightly less fear. These were the ones Belyev selected for breeding. He wasn't choosing the prettiest foxes or the ones with the best fur. He selected them based on one trait only, how they reacted to humans. What happened next would stun the scientific world. Within just four generations, about four years, the fox started showing unexpected changes not just in their behavior, but in their appearance. Belyev was about to demonstrate how quickly evolution could work when humans deliberately guided it. By 1963, just four years into the experiment, the foxes started showing bizarre changes that nobody had predicted. Some fox pups were born with floppy ears, like puppy dogs. Others developed curled tails, completely different from the straight, rigid tails of wild foxes. But the most striking change? Some foxes were being born with patches of white fur, something never seen in wild silver foxes. These physical changes weren't what Bellier was selecting for. He was only breeding the friendliest foxes. Yet somehow, by selecting for tameness alone, he was triggering a cascade of physical changes that made these foxes look more and more like dogs. It was as if he had accidentally pushed a button that activated an ancient genetic program for domestication. The changes in behavior were even more dramatic. By Generation 6, some fox pups were actively seeking human attention. They would whimper for attention and wag their tails when humans approached, behaviors never seen in wild foxes. Some even began making sounds similar to dog barks, something their wild cousins never did. But perhaps the most fascinating change was in their reproductive cycles. Wild foxes breed once a year during a specific season. But some of Belyev's foxes started breeding twice a year, and their breeding season became longer. It was like their entire biological clock had been reset. Belyev had stumbled onto something revolutionary. He wasn't just domesticating foxes, he was showing how domestication itself worked at a genetic level. And he was doing it at a speed that nobody had thought possible. By Generation 10, something even more unexpected had happened. Fox pups started opening their eyes earlier than normal wild foxes. Not by a day or two, but several days earlier. They also began responding to sounds sooner and showed curiosity about their environment much earlier than their wild counterparts. The changes in the fox's appearance became more dramatic. Some were born with shorter legs and tails. Others developed rounded, dog-like skulls instead of the narrow, angular skulls of wild foxes. Their teeth became smaller, and their ears grew larger. Even their faces changed, developing shorter snouts that made them look more puppyish. But the most fascinating change was in their social development. Wild fox pups go through a very specific socialization window, a brief period when they can bond with others. In Belyev's foxes, this window stayed open much longer. Some adult foxes retain juvenile behaviors throughout their lives, like playfulness and social bonding, traits rarely seen in wild adults. These foxes weren't just becoming tamer, they were developing an ability to read human gestures and expressions. By Generation 15, some foxes could understand human pointing gestures as well as dogs do, something that even chimpanzees struggle with. They had developed a kind of social intelligence specifically for interacting with humans. The Soviet scientific community couldn't ignore these results any longer. Belyev was demonstrating that complex genetic changes could happen far more quickly than anyone had believed possible. 
and he had the foxes to prove it. In the 1970s, the experiment faced a serious crisis. The Soviet Union's economic problems meant severe budget cuts. Belyev had to make an impossible choice – which foxes to save. He decided to keep only the tamest foxes and those showing the most unusual changes. This crisis actually accelerated the experiment in an unexpected way. Around this time, something remarkable happened with one of the female foxes. She began displaying an entirely new behavior. When her pups were born, she would bring them to the front of the cage to show them to the researchers, something even domestic dogs rarely do. It was as if she viewed the humans as part of her family group. The fox's intelligence was developing in surprising ways, too. They started showing problem-solving abilities that matched or exceeded those of dogs. Some foxes learned to open their cage latches by watching their caretakers do it. Others developed unique ways of getting attention, like mimicking the sounds of other animals at the research facility. But perhaps the most fascinating development was in their communication. The foxes developed a whole range of vocalizations that wild foxes never use. They would make different sounds for different situations, one for greeting familiar humans, another for requesting food, and even specific sounds that seemed to express joy during play. The changes weren't just superficial. Blood tests revealed that these foxes had different hormone levels than their wild cousins. Their stress hormone levels were much lower, and they produced higher levels of serotonin the same brain chemical associated with happiness in humans. By the 1980s, Belyev's foxes were providing insights that no one had expected. Scientists discovered that changes in the fox's behavior and appearance were linked to changes in their development as embryos. Small alterations in when certain genes were activated during development were creating massive differences in adult foxes. The most striking example came from studying fox pups' adrenal glands. In the domesticated foxes, these glands were significantly smaller than in wild foxes. This meant they produced fewer stress hormones, making them naturally calmer. But this change happened before the pups were even born. Their bodies were being built differently from the very beginning. Then came an observation that stunned everyone. The tamest foxes were developing patches of white fur in specific patterns, often on their faces, feet, and tail tips. These patterns were remarkably similar to those seen in other domesticated animals, like dogs, cats, and horses. Somehow, selecting for tameness was activating an ancient genetic pattern that seemed to be shared across species. The foxes were even developing different color variations that had never been seen in wild silver foxes. Some were born with brown or red fur instead of silver. Others showed mottled patterns or unique markings. Each new generation seemed to bring more variety just as had happened with dogs thousands of years ago. But the most fascinating discovery came from studying their brains. The domesticated fox's neural crest cells, which influence everything from fur color to facial features, were behaving differently during development. Elyev had essentially found the genetic switches that controlled domestication. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, the experiment faced its greatest threat. Research funding disappeared almost overnight. The scientists hadn't planned for this, they had devoted their lives to these foxes, and now they could barely afford to feed them. Some resorted to selling a few of the foxes as pets to fund the continuation of the experiment. During this crisis, something unexpected happened. The foxes that had been sold as pets demonstrated just how successful the domestication had been. They integrated into human households as easily as dogs. One family reported their fox would wait by the door for their children to come home from school. Another fox learned to use a litter box without any training. But the most remarkable case was a fox named Pushinka. She had been placed with a family that also had dogs. Not only did she learn household routines from watching the dogs, but she also started displaying protective behaviors toward the family's young children, something that had evolved in dogs over thousands of years. The scientists made another fascinating discovery during this period. The fox's cognitive development had changed so dramatically that they could now learn things as puppies that their wild ancestors could only learn as adults. They showed understanding of human gestures from as young as three weeks old, earlier than wolf pups or even some dog breeds. Even their play behavior had transformed. Wild foxes play primarily to practice hunting skills, but these foxes played simply for social bonding, just like dogs. 
They had developed the ability to understand play signals from both humans and other foxes, showing a level of social sophistication that surprised even the researchers. By 2000, advanced genetic testing reveals something extraordinary in Belle Yves foxes. Their genetic profile showed changes in over 100 genes, despite only being selected for tameness. The scientists had accidentally demonstrated how selecting for one trait could trigger widespread genetic changes. One particular discovery stunned geneticists. These foxes had developed a gene variant similar to williams burren syndrome in humans, a condition that makes people unusually friendly and trusting. Somehow, selecting for friendly foxes had activated genetic pathways that parallel human social behavior. The foxes' intelligence continued to evolve in unexpected ways. They began showing signs of understanding human emotions, not just actions. When a researcher acted sad, some foxes would approach and make physical contact, displaying empathy-like behavior never seen in wild foxes. They weren't just tame, they were developing emotional intelligence. Perhaps the most fascinating development was in their problem-solving abilities. When presented with puzzles that had stumped their ancestors, these foxes would look to humans for help, just like dogs do. They had developed not just the ability to solve problems, but the understanding that humans could be partners in finding solutions. The experiment also revealed something about aging. The domesticated foxes were living significantly longer than their wild counterparts, some reaching 15 years compared to the typical 5 to 7 years in the wild. They weren't just friendlier versions of wild foxes, they had physically evolved to thrive in human company. In recent years, researchers made an astounding discovery about the fox's vocal abilities. These domesticated foxes had developed a wider range of vocalizations than any wild fox population. They could produce sounds that fell into distinct categories, greeting calls, attention-seeking whines, and even what appeared to be laughter-like sounds during play. The most remarkable case was documented in 2019. A fox named Vika learned to mimic her owner's laughter, something previously thought impossible for foxes. She would make this sound specifically during play sessions, showing not just vocal mimicry, but an understanding of appropriate social context. DNA analysis revealed another surprise. The domesticated foxes had developed changes in genes relating to memory and learning, similar to those found in domestic dogs. This explained why they could learn commands more quickly than their wild cousins and retain that learning for longer periods. Scientists also discovered that these foxes had developed an extraordinary ability to understand human body language. In tests, they could follow human gazes to find hidden food, understand pointing gestures from different angles, and even respond to human emotional states they couldn't directly see, like hearing someone cry in another room. But perhaps the most fascinating finding came from studying their pups. Unlike wild fox pups, which show fear responses from a very early age, these domesticated pups maintained an extended period of fearlessness during development. This longer socialization window allowed them to form bonds not just with humans, but with other species like cats and dogs. The impact of the fox experiment went far beyond what anyone expected. In 2020, scientists studying these foxes made a groundbreaking discovery about domestication itself. They found that friendliness towards humans wasn't just changing the fox's behavior, it was actually altering their immune systems. The domesticated foxes had developed stronger immune responses to common pathogens, but showed less inflammatory response overall. This matched a pattern seen in domestic dogs, suggesting that living with humans actually reshapes an animal's entire biological defense system. One of the most unexpected findings came from studying the fox's sense of smell. Despite generations of domestication, their ability to detect scents remained as sharp as their wild cousins. However, they used this ability differently. While wild foxes primarily use scent for hunting and avoiding dangers, the domesticated foxes used it to identify individual humans and their emotional states. Researchers also discovered something fascinating about their social structure. Unlike wild foxes, which are typically solitary, these domesticated foxes had developed complex social hierarchies more similar to wolf packs. They would establish leaders, share responsibilities, and even babysit each other's pups behaviors never seen in wild foxes. The experiment revealed something profound about evolution, that changes in behavior could drive physical evolution. 
not just the other way around. By choosing friendly foxes, Belyev had set in motion a cascade of genetic changes that no one had predicted. The latest findings from the fox experiment have opened up entirely new questions about evolution and domestication. In 2021, researchers discovered that the domesticated foxes' brains were physically different from their wild cousins. The areas controlling fear responses were smaller, while regions involved in processing social information had grown larger. But the most fascinating discovery came from studying their dreams. Using advanced monitoring equipment, scientists found that these foxes, like dogs, appeared to dream about their daily interactions with humans. Their brain activity during sleep matched patterns seen when they were playing with or getting attention from their human caretakers. The experiment also revealed something unexpected about genetic memory. When exposed to wild foxes through a fence, the domesticated foxes showed no recognition of them as the same species. After just 60 years of selective breeding, a blink of an eye in evolutionary terms, they had developed such different social behaviors that they no longer identified with their wild ancestors. Even more surprisingly, some of the foxes began showing behaviors that had never been selected for. They started bringing toys to humans as gifts, something neither wild foxes nor their domesticated parents had done. It was as if unlocking their social potential had opened doors to completely new behaviors. The foxes had essentially created their own unique culture. They developed specific games they would play only with humans, different from how they played with other foxes. They even seemed to have preferences for certain human activities. Some would sit and watch television with their caretakers, while others showed interest in specific human tasks. Today, Belyev's Fox experiment continues at the Institute of Cytology and Genetics in Novosibirsk, Russia. After more than 60 years and 50 generations of foxes, it remains the longest-running genetic experiment in history. The current population includes some of the most domesticated foxes ever known, displaying behaviors that would have seemed impossible when the experiment began. These foxes represent more than just a scientific achievement. They're living proof of how quickly evolution can work when guided by human selection. What took wolves thousands of years to achieve through natural selection, these foxes accomplished in decades through careful breeding. The experiment has implications far beyond fox domestication. It's helping us understand how wild animals became our companions throughout history, from dogs and cats to horses and cattle. It's even providing insights into human evolution suggesting that our own species might have undergone a similar self-domestication process. But perhaps the most poetic outcome is what these foxes tell us about the bond between humans and animals. In just 60 years, they've developed an understanding of human emotions, gestures, and social cues that took dogs millennia to achieve. They remind us that the capacity for companionship might be written more deeply in animal DNA than we ever imagined. Belyev died in 1985, but his foxes continue to teach us new things about evolution, genetics, and the nature of domestication. Today, when one of these foxes wags its tail at a human visitor or brings a toy as a gift, it's not just displaying learned behavior, it's showing us a glimpse of how humanity's oldest animal friendships might have begun. See you later!